Well, good morning. We're gonna have some fun today, um, guys. We're gonna we're gonna bring it back a little bit old school for this uh, training. And what I mean by that is, I think we have so many new people right now. I think we've maybe missed um, for some of you guys just the, the core backbone of what the Princeton selling system is and what the key component to the job is. And um, when we first started teaching this stuff, it was like a theory. And then um, I don't know if you guys heard the podcast. I was like, you know, we begged Fred to to do some of the stuff, and I started crushing it. Um, and uh, and then we got some other guys in here who maybe didn't even have any mortgage experience. I'll give you I'll give you a, a, an example here. We, Russ Siegel is a guy I went to high school with who works for our team. I don't know if he's on the train. He usually can't make it because he uh, this is his first year in the mortgage industry, and he works another full time job. Um, and so he does this part time to try to break into it to make that transition. Russ has four loans in this week, right? And and uh, and he's been crushing, right? He's number one on the board so far for this week. Brand new to the industry in a market, by the way, in Chicago where we have absolutely zero other presence. Um, and you're like, say, Mark, why would you even let Russ come come work here? I said two things. One is Russ was criminally underpaid in the job that he had. He has a family. I knew he need, I knew he could do better, and I believed in him. I know him as a as a good person, but I also knew him as somebody who would follow the plan. And so when Russ tells me three out of every four weekends, he's hitting open houses, making sure he's got those collisions. He's using his nights and his weekends to do the prospecting activity. I was like, man, I believe in you and I know it'll work. And it's working for him. At a time where everybody else has got less business, he's starting to get traction. And for you guys who all were once new in this business, you know how hard that first year is when you don't really know what you're talking about and you're going out there and meeting with realtors. It took Russ five or six months to really get traction and confidence in his ability to have those conversations. But once he passed that mark, uh, the results started rolling in and he's doing an excellent job and kudos to uh, to Brett and his team over there who are working with him to, to teach him the job. And so I say this to you guys that no matter where you are in your business, I assume that right now everybody wishes they had more loans, right? It's different than it was, you know, for the last two years we've been teaching this stuff and everyone's like, yeah, you know, when the day comes, I'm purchase focused, I'm going to do this stuff. Well, now the day is here and we have to be really good in order to get business. And the problem for us as loan officers is, is that especially coming out of this pandemic, but even prior, right? Most of us got to wherever we were because we were at least pretty good at doing the reactive work. When somebody wants a loan, we call them back right away. We pride ourselves on being available. We answer the phone. We get loans done. We do those different things. And that is valuable work. And by the way, if you're really good at that part of the job, you can make a living in this business. You can make six, well into six figures doing that. Um, you do it long enough and you follow your process and you do a good job. But if you want to grow your business quickly or if you want to add more loans right away, you cannot do it through valuable customer service. In fact, what we know is, and if you've got business industry long enough, you've probably seen it yourself, is that less than 30% of our customers, even the ones who tell us we did an amazing job, come back to us when they buy their next home. It's like they forget they ever had a mortgage person. They go on to whoever their next realtor recommends or whoever they know in that moment. And so I say this to you guys because the valuable lasting relationships that you build with your referral partners are the $1,000 an hour work. So let me explain what I mean by that. I see fully qualified, fully credentialed government underwriters with 20 years of experience right now begging for jobs right now on LinkedIn for $75,000. Those people are could do the reactive work, right? They probably know more about guidelines than many of us. Right. They can answer the phone. They can work up applications. They can do all that different things. And that job right now is paying seventy five thousand dollars a year. Even at the height of the pandemic, it was one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year job. OK, if you extrapolate that over the hours of the over the course of the year, it's it's fifty dollar an hour work, seventy five dollar an hour work, however you want to slice it up. By the way, it's awesome. Really great job. Great career. Tough job. A lot of pressure. You got to make sure you get things right. The reason why you guys are salespeople and our loan officers is because you guys conceivably can do the $1,000 an hour work, right? And by the way, that $1,000 an hour work in different lines of work could be $10,000 an hour work. Our ability to create and develop meaningful relationships with other successful people, because again, this is the key part of it. It's not about having relationships with every realtor. It's about being able to develop relationships with the good ones, the ones that have business, the ones that have the kind of business that you can do loans for, right? And so thinking about what that means too is the $1,000 an hour work. Now, the problem is, is that it's proactive work. So even if we're super well-intended and working hard and sitting at our desk eight hours a day, it's really easy to do none of this $1,000 an hour work. 
And it's uncomfortable because why, why is it that we don't do this $1,000 an hour work? Why is, why is it $1,000 an hour work? Why, why, do we, why does relationship building and your ability to get realtors to work with you, why, is that, why do we even call it $1,000 an hour? Why, why, does it, why, do loan, why can a loan officer make $500,000 or a million dollars in a year? What is it about human nature? I'm asking, what is it about human nature that makes this work so valuable? So few people will do it. Why? Seems so easy. All I do is go talk to some people and make friends. It's hard to make the connection between the action and the result. It's hard to say that again. It's hard to make the connection between the action and the result. So in other words, I pick up the phone. It doesn't immediately result in new business. And so I devalue that activity. In other words, we're really bad at being patient. And we're really bad at connecting the dots between on a long-term process, what is gonna result in success for us and what isn't. And so we will choose boring or less meaningful work that will result in some sort of instant gratification over and over again, over the long and difficult road of work that will lead us to where we wanna go. And really what the goal of Ninja is, is what more income for our work so we can enjoy the rest of our lives. And so this is something that we we built this company beating this drum and i've gotten away from it a little bit for a couple of different reasons one is we start i start to get veteran loan officers in here you're like ah do i really have to tell them this stuff apparently the answer is yes and i say this with love because we all need to hear it right um and the second piece is i i forget sometimes how i've been here now for almost five years but some of you guys have been here for five weeks or five months and so i forget how many people are new and hearing this stuff for the first time but let me say it to you we've had lots of people come in here who knew nothing about mortgages and who were not natural connectors or salespeople come in here and follow this program and build real careers for themselves and get business. It works. The difference is the people who see the people don't come down to, to me, it's, it's two or three things. First, and most importantly, is they actually have to go out and make the collisions. And we're gonna talk about our four C's today and we're really gonna dive into what that means, our four C's. But the collision is the first C. For you guys who have friends that are brokers in the real estate world, I recommend you call them up and ask them for a list of the top 100 agents in your area. It's something they'll have based on production. If you lived and worked in your area for more than five years and you don't personally know 70 or 80% of the people on this list, you're already letting yourself down. So let me say that again. We'll, we'll just use real numbers. Call a broker that you know who's willing to work with you. Hey, can you give me a list of the top 100 realtors in the area? I'm doing a project at work and I want to see, you know, where, how many of those people I know. Cool. You need to know 70 of the top 100 real estates personally, where if you call them, they know you and you know them. You guys are connected on social media. You see their posts, they see yours. 70 of the top 100. If not, if you're not already there, then your number one focus going into Q4 needs to be collisions with those people and the people who work for those people. Now, when I, what I mean on a collision is, is an interaction. Hopefully it's in person, it doesn't have to be, it could be a phone call, right? And the best collisions are ones that feel organic, but are manufactured. So let me say that again. The best collisions are the ones that feel organic, but are intentional and manufactured. So what does that mean, right? There's a seller's realtor on every single deal. Most loan officers never call the seller's realtor. Blows my mind. This is a free organic collision. It's also a collision that you get to prepare for and that you get to have consistent collisions with over a four to six week period normally on a normal transaction, where it would be completely normal for you to have four to six interactions with this person over that month or month and a half period. What's even crazier is if you do that, you will talk to them more than their current favorite loan officer does over that same time period in almost all cases. You can be the loan officer this person talks to the most over the next four, the, uh, four to six weeks. So that collision can become a relationship. And we're gonna talk about how to manufacture that and foster that process as we go forward. But if you do not have collisions, you will not grow your business. The goal, for everybody, for you guys, we should be collisions with new realtors in Q4 should be 60. 
And as you think about your key results, I don't, this is an activity, not a result. And so normally I'd say, don't do it as a key result. I'm gonna break the rules for you guys on this one because I think it's so vital to how you think about this stuff. There's 13 weeks in the quarter, take one week on vacation, call it Christmas. You need to have five collisions every week with new realtors. Now, this is one of those things where if I said to you, I was gonna shoot you at the end of the quarter, if you didn't do it, you guys, most of you guys would have it done in October. There's no reason you can't go meet 60 realtors in your community over the next three months. Most of you guys live in communities where there's probably literally thousands of realtors that live within 20 miles of your front door. If you drew a circle of 20 miles around your front door, there are probably thousands of realtors. You need to go meet 60. And then the process for turning that collision into a relationship. And by the way, we're not trying to turn every collision into a relationship. We're trying to interview 60 people to find out which ones are worthy of us investing in to have a meaningful relationship. Think of it as speed dating. But instead of only one person, hopefully, that you get to date, some of you guys might be, some of you guys might be cooler than me, I only date one person at a time. Um, you get to date 10 or 20 realtors at a time to have those relationships, but you can't have 50 relationships. So some of us tell ourselves, well, then I don't need to meet 60 realtors. You do. Because just like if you lived in an area where there were only 10 people that you, that potentially 10 people that you could be in a relationship with, you have a much greater chance of settling for someone that you are not perfect for than if you're in an environment where there are 10,000 people that would be eligible for you to date or be in a relationship with. And so the collisions do a number of things for us. One, the more we have, right? And I want you guys to really pay attention to this because it's about the number. You have to have five a week, minimum three, but the goal should be five. First of all, what it does is it takes away all of your desperation and commission breath. If you meet three realtors a month, you are now invested. Just by having, if you, you're not organic, you're not out in the community, you don't meet a lot of realtors. Every time you meet one now, you need that to work out. There's like this real desperation. If you meet five every week, you're only gonna get excited when you find somebody you wanna do business with and it flips the dynamic of the relationship. We are so good intuitively of knowing who needs who more during a conversation. And if you're talking to, if you know every, if you know that 70 of the top 100 realtors in your area and you're meeting five, three to five new realtors every week, when you meet one, you're just like casually getting to know them and seeing if it's somebody that you'd wanna spend time with. And generally you're thinking, this person probably isn't better than the, my 10 favorite realtors I already do business with. If you only know 30 realtors total, five of which like you, every time you meet one, it's going to feel like a desperation. So we have to have a number of collisions that we're shooting for. Then we have a process here through our four C's. Let me say this too. Regardless of how your collision goes, you want to run the rest of your process. Even if you have a realtor that you don't think is great or that you don't want to have a relationship with, them knowing you and liking you is still good for your business. Okay? The more realtors who, this is a true story. I met, I met with the guy who runs Real Producers here in Charleston. And he's like, he's got the gossip on everybody. He doesn't share it. He's not like a gossipy person, but he knows about everybody. And kind of like in the middle of lunch, he said to me, he goes, he goes, you know, I, I've, I've heard everything about everybody in this town, but I've never heard anyone say anything bad about Princeton Mortgage. You know, just like, you know, he's like, I've heard like a deal didn't go well or whatever, but that all of her is that the people are good. Everybody's a good person over there, right? That is because of the marketing effort that we do to stay in flow with these people and the amount of touches that we have and that we don't have bad people working here and we do a good job for them, right? But it's, it's the consistency of the marketing and being in front of those people that's delivering value. So everyone has an opinion on Princeton Mortgage here because they've all gotten those 13 by 30s and they get the weekly emails. And by the way, they make us seem like really good guys. Well, you have to go out and make those collisions first because what we know is that those 13 by 30s don't work if the person doesn't know you already. And when I say know you, I mean three to five minute forward conversation, a collision. Once they've met you and they start getting stuff from you, they get it, they see it, and they internalize it. It's just noise if they haven't met you yet. So we get this collision. Hey, we go to, I, by the way, the, people don't like to do this. Let me tell you something. Get interested in, ho in houses. You guys are in housing. Go to open houses every weekend. You will grow your business. Now you're saying you're lying to yourself and saying, well, everybody goes to open houses. That's where all the loan officers go. No, they don't. You know how I know? 
Because when I go to the ones in Charleston, they go, yeah, I've met some other loan officers that open houses, and they're all at Princeton. You know, all the other loan officers they've met at open houses are guys that work for guys and girls that work for Princeton, right? They're, no one else is going, right? It's an automatic collision spot. And it's a collision spot where the realtors are on trying to win over you when you walk in the door. So if you don't wear your Princeton gear and you're just somebody checking out houses, maybe looking for investment opportunities, but it's an opportunity to have an organic collision with new realtors, they're on. They're dressed to the nines, they're ready to go, they're in a good mood, you walk in and they're ready to have a conversation with you right away. I don't usually mention I'm in the mortgage industry until it comes up and sometimes it doesn't come up at all and that's okay. But I gotta manufacture these collisions. So where do we manufacture collisions? First of all, every seller's realtor should be hearing from you during the offer process. I used to say that one of the great gifts of that inventory crisis we had last year was that sometimes you're getting three, four, five offers to get a house. That was three or four, three, four or five sellers, realtors that you got to meet and have a collision with and then get into our 13 by 30s. We want to take those as collisions. Open houses are collisions. Networking events are collisions. Joining real producers events is, is collisions, right? Manufacture these collisions. Call an open house sign that goes up in your neighborhood. I mean, a real, like, well, not an open house, a, um, a, um, a for sale sign that goes up in your neighborhood. Say you want to get information about your neighbor's house. It's an opportunity to have a collision. Okay. Connection is the second step of our four C's. What do I mean by connection? Well, social media has created a for free environment where we get to see each other and what's going on in our lives and our feeds and advertise to that person. So we want to connect with that person by following them on Instagram, connecting them on Facebook, connecting with them on LinkedIn. Realtors are insecure about what they post the same way you're insecure about what you post. When you like it and comment on it and share it and tell them how great they are, they will like you for it. And this is a free way to stay in flow with these people. And we're talking about flow as we get going too. Okay. Collision connection. Card. More than ever, people value a handwritten note card. You'd think it'd be the opposite. It's not. Because of social media and all the other emails and other things, when someone gets a handwritten note card, it stands out. I'll tell you when I get them, and by the way, you know, I know Ray sends his handwritten note cards because I've probably gotten a couple from him over the last year. Dave, I know has gotten a few from him. They're all sitting on our desks. Every time I get one, I'm like, oh, that was nice. And I go to throw it away and I'm like, eh, and I put it on my desk. Because you know how much effort it took to send a handwritten note card. You had to get the note card, write it down, put it in an envelope, address the envelope, get a stamp. It's a lot of work. People value it. We know that our trend, I, I, the first thing I did when we built the prison selling system was I went out and interviewed 50 of the top 500 loan officers in the country. These people had almost nothing in common other than that the vast majority of them told me that sending note cards was a huge part of their business. Invest in sending the two note cards every day as part of your Ninja 9. It works. And then the last piece of our four C's is the cookie, which kicks off our 13 and 30. So collision, connection, card, and cookie. Now we ran the numbers on this, guys. And if you had a real Ford conversation in person with a real estate agent and then put them through the 13 by 30, 30% 30 of those people were referring a loan that closed within 90 days of them receiving the cookie. 30%. So that means if you over the next two weekends, if you go meet 10 realtors at 10 open houses, you have meaningful conversations with them, connect with them on social media, send them the handwritten note card, put them into the 13 by 30, and then the end of 13 by 30, give them a follow-up call, because that's the last piece of the 13 by 30 is the follow-up call. Three of those 10 people will give you a loan that closes within the next 90 days on average. Sounds too good to be true. Go Can ahead, I add Ken. To that more? Yeah. So one of the things I noticed too, because uh, I, I think you're absolutely right on that, is that I think as loan officers, we tend to overvalue the relationships that we do have, ironically, meaning that we think we have this roster of, of agents that are going to send us business and we rely on this roster of agents to send us business. And, you know, the roster is probably not big enough. They probably There's probably not enough business to get inside that group of people to say, oh, I sent, let's say you sent 40 cookies out to the agents you already know, or you sent the 40 cookies out to the agents you already do business with, um, you're probably less likely to, to, to hit those numbers with the agents you already do business with than if you are doing this with new agents. The newer agents 
are the are the opportunities that you haven't met yet. So just my experience through the last eight weeks of doing this is that I'm having as much, if not more, success in response rate and thank yous and in con in conversions with the agents I didn't do business with than the ones that I did do business with and sent them a cookie anyway. Yeah, of course, because by the way, the first impression is everything, right? The people who already know you, they already know what they think, and suddenly getting a bunch of shit from Princeton Mortgage isn't gonna change the fact that they thought you were a second-rate loan officer based on their first impression. And that might hurt your feelings to hear it, but if they're if you're not already their number one loan officer, the idea that you're gonna send them a cookie and a bunch of postcards and suddenly now you're gonna be number one, that's never gonna happen. That's not how people make decisions. What we want to do is now that we're on our A game and we have a process is meet new people that we can build new relationships with and make new impressions for. And we're all, so of course our conversion percentage is going to be higher with people we haven't met yet. The people that we haven't met yet are going to think we're amazing, that we fell from a tree of God. They're like, wow, this person came up, they didn't ask me for anything. We had this amazing Ford conversation. Somebody sent me handwritten note cards. I got a cookie from them. My loan officer's never done anything for me. I got to check this guy out, right? Again. I, it all goes back to the same thing as dating. And I know that people get crazy with, sometimes with me when I give these when I give these analogies, but I'll, I'll give you the analogy, right? If a girl you've known since second grade, senior year, starts dressing and acting differently, you're still like, I know that girl. You don't suddenly change everything you knew about that person for the last 10 years, right? You might be like, what's going on? You might be intrigued, but like, you're not going to hop back. You're, it's not going to immediately change how you think. But if a new girl shows up at your school, what was that like, right? The new guy who's mysterious at the school, right? There's some mystery here, some intrigue. I might learn something, this person's new. So yes, of course it's about new collisions all the time. And here's the other thing, Ken, and that I think is really interesting. We have a My25 here. And by the way, I think that's the right number if you're actually working the system. I think for most of you guys right now, you should be thinking about it as like a My8 and then be growing into My25. And then even with your my eight, your goal should be to be replacing somebody in your my eight every single month with somebody new. So if you have eight people right now that you that you're depending on for business, you think that know you like you trust you and that you're in flow with, cool. You need to be upgrading your my eight every single month. Meaning that if I look at this eight months from now, maybe three of your eight are the same, and you've recycled out those bottom five to put better, higher producing agents that you enjoy spending your life with more than the agents you had in there originally. Same thing we need to my 25. When you get to my 25, you should be replacing two of those people every month, upgrading those spots, right? So if you think about it, think about it like, hey, like I have 25 realtors that I like to do business with. I wanna keep upgrading the talent density of those people I'm, I'm investing my time, energy, and money into. So I gotta make sure I'm weeding out the people at the bottom all the time. We do the same thing with recruiting, right? Let's say if you're if you're if you're a, if you're Jeff here, you can have a relationship with 50 to 75 loan officers across the industry. Maybe you should be looking to take out the ones you decide you don't want to hire every single month and replacing them with five that you're desperate to hire and continuously upgrading who you're spending that time with. Right. So when we talk about our nine ninja nine activities, we here's what we know, right? We know that we do not want to do the proactive thousand dollar an hour work. So if it's not in your calendar and you don't develop a process to do this part first, you will not do it. Now, here's what's really crazy. If you did every piece of the Princeton selling system perfectly at most, like, I mean, perfectly, like you were like, I'm going to kill this thing, 100% scores every week. It's 12 hours a week at max. At max, you can't spend more than 12 hours doing it unless you're over talking in your Ford conversations. That includes five new collisions, 54 conversations, 10 handwritten note cards, doing your, your gratitudes, writing them out, all of your different stuff, all of that proactive work that comes into it is at most, and you see the scorecard is at most 10 to 12 hours a week, right? But we don't do it. We tell ourselves we're too busy. We can't get to it. It's not that important. It's not that fun. Whatever. It's not going to work, which is the biggest lie we tell ourselves because it does. And we always want to be finding new people to do this with because it works better with the people that we can make a first impression with now. Conceivably, you're a better loan officer today than you were when you met the realtors you know right now. Let, let's let five new realtors every week meet this new version of you that's getting better all the time. So raise your hand if in the last two weeks, 
you've had a collision, either face-to-face or phone call, with five realtors you'd never met before. Over the last two weeks, you've met five realtors. Jamie says yes, Ray says yes. Anyone else? That's the job, guys. Fred says maybe yes. That is the job. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds counterintuitive. My job is to do loans. The job is to close loans. Your job is to be the person in your community that every realtor knows they all like and respect and that you have 25 that you have meaningful relationships with and are in flow with so they send you business. Everything else is something you could eventually, if you were really good at that, you could hire an army of people to do the rest of the job. Your highest leverage activity is finding 25 realtors that think you're awesome. And then by the way, continuing to improve yourself, who you are and your value proposition so that more people find you awesome. What is your brand, right? The realtors that I have relationships with, I have relationships with because I help them grow their business. I help them, I do this same training I'm doing with you, with them to help them grow their business. And then they're attracted to wanting to spend time and work with us. And so that's how, that's my value proposition, right? For somebody else, it might be, I throw the best wine mixers every month and my realtors come because they like to get out of the house and get and get drunk with me and then they send me their business. That's okay too. But you got to figure out what your brand is and find your people. Josh, Katagana. I don't see you or hear you, but I saw your hand. I'm here. What's up? Sorry. What's up? You had your hand up. Uh, sorry, that was just for... Um... <clears throat> That was late. That was because I met five realtors in the last two weeks. Nice. I'm glad to hear it, man. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, well, let's, let's open it up for a second because I've been lecturing for longer than I like to right now. We have our four C's that are the secret to the job. At most, it's 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours a week. And I'm saying if you do all of the things in the Ninja 9, but we know that most of us aren't doing it. So first of all, what's holding us back? What's holding you back? Or what's the things are in your way? What's the story you're telling yourself to make it okay that you that you can't spend three hours going to five open houses on the weekend? Guys, take Tuesdays off. Go on Saturday if you want. Go take another day off. Spend three hours a week. Maybe your community has open houses during the week. Great, go to those. Go to open houses. Meet all the realtors. Make them fall in love with you. They respect the hustle too. They do, right? Work on your value proposition, but what quite, what questions do we have about any of this stuff? So by the, you guys know what the third, go ahead, well, real quick, I'll, I'll say, do you guys, the 13 by 30, by the way, just so you know, the initial collision and the phone call at the end are two of the 13 connections. The card is the third one. The other 10 are automated as part of our process. Right. Well, actually, you're connecting on social media. So that's and then and then that's you too. The other nine are happening. They're getting our weekly emails. They're getting something sent to them in the mail every week over those 30 days. So you're it's going to look them like you're everywhere. And that happens automatically once you request that 13 by 30 after the collision. And that's the magic of this system. Now, if you're also posting on your social media, taking what Dan posts up there, putting your videos up, now they're going to see you even more. And the magic of social media, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg is that when you have a new connection on social media, similar to Ken's other point, you show up at the top of their feed every time you post until they stop interacting with your posts, right? So when you guys first newly connect, everything you post is gonna go right to the top of their feed. So now you guys need to have more flow with them as you go forward. And that's why it's so important to be consistently posting as you meet people. Ken, what was your question? I'm curious to get your take on this. So, um, and and one thing that I've always struggled with, and and even as we and our team started building out our preferred partners, which I guess you would call your top 25, um, it was really difficult for, especially difficult for me and difficult for a lot of the uh, loan officers to really pick 25. And I broke the rules and I have uh, 56 and it was really only supposed to be 40. So what criteria are you looking at when you open up total expert and you're like, all right, I'm looking at my top 25. Obviously, you know, you want to replace somebody with somebody instead of just adding. I think we have that tendency to just add. So how are you gauging who should come off of that list? Well, first of all, I'm 
just because I send somebody a 13 by 30 doesn't mean they're on my list. Agreed. Right? So I want, I'm going to send 13 by 30s to everybody. I want every realtor to get my stuff. Um, I might change my mind. They may start getting new business, whatever it is. Okay? I, I can get your 56 down to 25 right now in two seconds. First of all, take anyone off the list that didn't do four buy sides in the last 12 months. Number one. If they didn't do four buy sides in the last 12 months and you're looking to cut your number down, take them off the list. Now half your realtors are gone, just like that. Maybe not half, but it's close enough. Then ask yourself, how many of these people would I feel comfortable referring my friend to work with? That will pretty quickly tell you who you're willing to invest in a meaningful relationship with. Because you can lie to yourself and be like, well, that person does a lot of business, right? I want to be, I want a relationship with them. But like, would you refer your cousin to work with them? No, I don't actually, that means you don't actually like that person. Go find someone you actually like. Nicole and I were having this conversation about a realtor in Charleston last night. It's like, I don't want to work with that person. So I don't care how much business they do. Right? So how many of those 56 people are people that you would refer your cousin to, a cousin you like, assuming, um, and how many of those people did more than four buy sides last year? Now And now where's your list at? So do you have a tier two or is it just top 25 and everybody else? I, I would, it's okay to stay, remember, I'm staying in flow with those people. They're still getting my weekly emails. They're still seeing my social media posts. I'm, not, I'm connected with them. But no, the answer is I actually think, I think if you're doing this correctly and thinking about it correctly, I think you should be struggling to get to 25. In other words, these are like the magical people you want to invest your time and money with. These are the people that on Christmas, you wanna send them a handwritten note card telling them and specifically referencing something that's going on with them in their lives. You know the names of their kids. You know what sports teams they like. You know where they go for fun and where to eat. You know what motivates them. You Every six months you buy them a book just because you see it and you were thinking of that person or you thought they might like it. You can't, most of us, if, you, if I ask you how many people you have in your life that you really care about, that if something happened to them, it would really have an impact on your life, right? It's probably not 25 people. If it is, God bless you, right? And so 25 is a big number to have meaningful relationships with, right? Here's the thing. You may have some good referral partners right now that probably don't belong in your My 25. Now, that's okay. I'm not saying you have to kick them out. I'm just saying you should be, your fantasy then should be like, yes, I work with Sue Claire. Okay, great. Sue Claire is my realtor. One of every two clients that Sue Claire has end up mad at me or her by the end of the process. She's not really super reliable. I don't really enjoy spending time with her. She's not really my vibe, but she does send me all of her clients. You should be working your ass off and getting collisions with the idea that someday I'm going to fire Sue. Now, today I can't afford to do it because I need Sue's business. But if you have a Sue in your, in your, in your My25 right now, someone that you actually don't like working with, but you still play the game with because they send you business, you should be, how I'm letting myself down and ruining my integrity, by the way, at a certain point, because I'm unwilling to go have, find the new collisions to upgrade this relationship. And so I'm still investing my time and energy into somebody I don't want to invest my time and energy into. And by the way, trust me, if you actually do this, you'll be able to go hire a junior loan officer for your team, and then you can dump Sue on them. Right? The potential, this is the job. If you're like, man, I, I did, I've been a $10 million loan officer for the last 10 years, and I want to be a $50 million loan officer. If you do just what we're talking about this morning for the next 18 months, it's a real thing. And if you, and but here's the thing, now listen, you tell me, Mark, for the last five months, I've gotten, I've met five new realtors every single week and they're not working with me. Cool. Now we'll coach you up on how to do a better job with your collisions, add more value, how you can become a better version of yourself that will attract the good people to want to work with you. And by the way, we all have work to do in those areas, right? But for most of you, it's that people actually love you. That's why you do this job. You're just not having enough collisions. We can, we can, we will continue to do the hard work of making ourselves people that, uh, that most people would want to work with, right? But the easy part right now is just searching for the people that we're already perfect for. And they're out there, right? How many of you guys would feel reasonably confident 
that if I called 70 of the top agents, 70 top 100 agents in your area, and I asked them, name your top 10, name 10 loan officers that you know, that you would be one of those 10 for 70 of the top 100 realtors. Ken thinks maybe, Nicole maybe. This is the job, guys. That is the job. Right. And so when you think about what that means for you, how are you going to market yourself in order to get out there to be in front of more people so more people know you, like you, and trust you? Right. This is where like billboards come into play. People like laugh, like, I would never do that. It's like, actually, you get your billboard in the right spot. You have a bunch of realtors who have already got the 13 by 30s. You know what people think about people with billboards? They're probably kicking ass. You can send a really strong message that you're somebody that people would want to work with. Right. I'm not saying anybody should go out and do that. I'm just suggesting to you is like, as you think about what you want to do to get in front of, you know, you can get 70 of the top 100 realtors to know who you are. Have a billboard in a major area where those people are driving every day. They'll know you. As I drive around Charleston, I can tell you which agents and which loan officers are on the billboards. I see them. Right. And again, these people are already looking for loan officers. They're realtors, right? They're in the industry. It's not just a billboard they're driving by. Questions about the four C's. Anybody here think this is a difficult, any, anybody think anything that we talked about here this morning is difficult to do? Is it difficult to meet five realtors a week? Is that a hard, or by the way, you, but if you meet them, you can just call them. Is, is that difficult? No. Is it difficult to go into the system and request a 13 by 30? Think anybody could figure that out? We can teach any nine-year-old to do that. Is it difficult to connect with them on social media? No, every nine-year-old can do that one too. Is it difficult to take Dan Cooley's suggested social media posts, add one line about your thoughts and put them up on your social media? No, that's all real easy to do, right? And by the way, presumably you chose this line of work because generally when you meet people, they like you. This is all very easy to do. There's just one problem. It's even easier not to do it. And so you have to make the choice to do the easy thing over the even easier thing. And by the way, to change your business, how much would it change how you feel about work if you were auditioning realtors because you knew them all to see which ones you wanted to work with and which ones you wanted to spend your time with and you could fire somebody who wasn't your kind of person anymore. That realtors were afraid to call you and give you attitude even when a loan is going bad because they might have to go work with somebody else because you have the leverage. It's not, it's not a 10 year journey, it's an 18 month journey of going out and meeting these people and having these collisions, getting to know these people. Get that list, call your favorite broker and ask him for the favor. They have it, they all have the list. They all know who the top realtors are. Go through the list, go through them one by one, find out who they are. But by the way, you may meet some of them and be like, I'm never working with that person, great. The more people that you know you don't wanna work with, the more easier it'll be for you to find the people you do. This is the job. Doing the loans, all the other stuff in the else is a distraction that feels good from doing the job, the thing that you actually get paid the money to do. And if you do this part well enough, you can hire somebody who is better than you at all the other stuff. Just how it works. We have five minutes left, guys. Any other questions on this? This is us getting back to basics. Everything else we talk about in training is a building block off of this. If you don't go meet realtors, you don't have to come out to the trainings anymore because it doesn't matter. You don't, you don't, you're not, you know, if you don't meet realtors, if you're not having those collisions, if you're not having those 54 conversations every week, you're not going to get the business. Your business is not going to grow. There is no shortcut for this, right? Now you can do the long, hard work of just being really great at customer service and people liking you, and maybe your business will grow and shrink and, you know, over time you can make a living. And by the way, no, no judgment. But for you guys who are like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to double my business in order to keep going right now over, the, over these winter months. Here's the plan. I just gave it to you. 
And I promise you it will work. Guaranteed. You go meet 60 realtors in the, over Q4 and you put them into the 13 by 30 and send the handwritten note cards and post on social media and do this stuff. You will have at least five brand new referral partners at a minimum that you want to do business with at the end of Q4. And it's all out there. Any questions? Anybody want to raise their hand and commit that they are going to they're going to do this the 60 collisions over Q4 right now? Anyone bold enough to be like I'm publicly going to say I'm going to do it? Nicole's going to do it. Josh is going to do it. Kate, Jamie, Carolyn. Oh, look at this! Look at this! Oh, peer pressure's working. I was I about to it. say if my team doesn't raise their hand, they're they're fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Josh is watching. <laughs> Guys, it's not, it's. You have to ask yourself, if you don't want to commit to that, are you in the right job? This should be the fun part. It should be fun to go out and meet realtors. By the way, if you don't like going by yourself, bring your kid, bring a friend, bring your wife. You, open houses are fun. I just like going to look at fancy houses. Right? And by the way, the whole collision thing works better if you like to go to the open houses for open houses. Be nosy. Look around. Have fun with it all. Right? Be interesting when you go out there. Don't even make it just about business. Make it about, I want to meet every realtor in Charleston. I want to meet every realtor in Delco. I want them all to know who I am. Right? And if you go out there and do that, I just want, forget, I don't need business from this person. I don't need anything from this person. I want to meet this person and interview them and say, is this somebody I want to have a relationship with? And by the way, I like going to open houses. The rest of it will fall into place. Work your system. Have your scorecard sitting out on your desk. Face it every Friday when you do your OKRs and get those things into the system. I appreciate it, guys. I hope you had some fun today. Please rate the training. And by the way, Vic and Rich are going to do some uh, market stuff with you guys tomorrow. I will be traveling. Um, please show up. Be ready to go for that. And um, happy selling, everybody. I'll see you guys.